Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be talking about how to stop absorbing negative energy. So when people are coming to you, opening up, sharing with you all kinds of stories or when you go to crowded places or when you are in an environment surrounded with people who are maybe complaining or sharing, you know, more negative thoughts with you, what to do in those kind of situations and how to adapt your life in a way that will be more supportive for yourself. Because if you're a more sensitive person, it means that you have to discover uh, what that sensitivity is offering to you. So you can actually embody that uh, part of you and do the most out of it rather than just being a victim of it. Today I wrote an interesting message that I want to make it as an introduction for today's video. It goes like this, to stop being affected by negative energy, you must stop absorbing it. A sponge is acceptable for liquid because it's dry, it has nothing to offer, so all it can do is to consume. Once you start engaging in activities that make you feel alive, joyful, aware, creative, peaceful, confident, acknowledged, truthful, and wise, you become filled with life. Now you're not a dry sponge anymore, but rather a fire of inspiration. Fire is not affected by low energies, it transmutes them. So if this already resonates with you, hit the like button because it helps to bring this message to more people that need to hear it. So this is like a positive introduction, but I want to make it more practical because we have to learn not to be dry sponges. You know, if we don't take care of that, and let's say you are a more energetically sensitive person, you might notice that you easily become dry, you easily become drained out, especially if you're surrounded with energy vampires, right? Those who are constantly robbing you from energy and poisoning your inner purity with their toxicity and negativity and everything they're sharing with you. You have to recognize that firstly, for enemies, you have to learn to protect your inner purity. The reason that people come to you out of nowhere and start opening up to you is because they notice within you something they've lost through their personal experiences, and that is purity. They notice, the, they notice your purity. You're a pure person, a pure soul. They also understand that because of your purity, you don't want to offend them, you don't want to uh, do anything negative to them, and that's why they feel safe with you. So they open up, they open up to you, and they start sharing all kinds of stories with you. But you have to become aware of this pattern. It's because of your own inner purity. If you would look within, you would notice you're a pure soul. And you only want the best for all, right? That's why they sense you like that. But you have to learn to protect that purity. You have to learn to protect yourself. You have to learn to set boundaries. You have to learn to say, okay, it's enough for now. I would love to hear more from you, but for now, I have other things to do, right? You have to learn to set boundaries, so you don't exhaust yourself. You also need to recognize why you have stayed so pure. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? You're a pure soul. There's a reason for that. There's a purpose to that. You have to recognize why you are like that. So you need to empower yourself. So you go from a sponge who's constantly absorbing the energy from external environments to become more empowered and acknowledged so you can learn how to actually use your purity to purify this planet, to purify the society. And that becomes a really incredible work we can do. It's not about forcing someone to change, 
but rather to recognize what feels for us the most pleasant to do, the most creative to do, the most um, empowering to do, what helps us to make our lives better because that's how we become uh, more alive, right? We need to recognize how to make our life's experience more empowering, more incredible, more interesting, more enthusiastic, more passionate, more creative. So through those experiences, we gain incredible insights, incredible wisdom. And as we go through those unique experiences, we also learn how to use what we've learned to make something valuable for others. That's how some people go into entrepreneurship, some people go into art, some people go into science, and they want to use their inner purity to purify the system, to purify the world. That's why we are the way we are. That's why all people like that are really creative. If you're an artist, you're a highly sensitive person because only that way you can sense when you're reading a poetry, you can sense the energy of it. When you're reading a book, you can sense the energy of an author, right? You can sense when you're talking with someone, you sense the energy behind or beneath words. When you're watching a movie, when there's something deep happening, you sense it. That's the beauty of being sensitive. But if you then place yourself into a wrong environment, into an environment that doesn't value this pure soul, this pure personality, then you will be easily poisoned. You will be easily drained out and exhausted. So you have to start valuing yourself for being a pure soul, a pure being. And to value yourself for being that, you have to see yourself for that. You need to notice that your mental activities have a huge part to this. Because even though you may be sensitive and like a pure soul, you may be still hard on yourself with your own thoughts, consciously and unconsciously. You may be blaming yourself because things like that are happening to you. You may think there's something wrong with you because people are constantly coming to you, opening up, but also dogs are constantly coming to you and cats are constantly coming to you, right? And you go into the forest and squirrels come to you and birds come to you. It's because you have this attractive, safe energy. It's what you're vibrating, right? And you have to start seeing yourself like that. You need to become aware of your own mental activities towards yourself, how you're thinking about yourself. And that's where you start changing your thinking patterns. Because there's many subconscious thoughts that may be saying why you should fix someone, why you shouldn't say no to someone, why you you why it's hard for you to set boundaries sure because we're not used to do that because maybe nobody taught us that but that's why it's so important to acknowledge ourselves to empower ourselves to come across books that can actually help you information that can help you so we can protect your purity for all cost because you will notice that from your inner purity you can create something new. You can bring something new, something unique to this planet. It's not out of um, what you've heard. It's not out of what somebody said to you. It's out of what you feel. That's why it's so important to have this um, sensitivity, to be sensitive and to be aware of our senses. But we need to be in an environment that supports that. So we have to think about how to create an environment that will support myself for who I am, for how I'm functioning. Do I need to be more in nature? Do I need to let go of certain relationships? And maybe when you start changing, you will notice that some people will start to look at you differently. Like your friends will say to you, what are you doing? Like, 
there's something wrong with you and things like that. And you, those are the times where you just need to say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making changes. And eventually you will notice that paths will separate you. You will go into a different path where you will meet new people. And this is an important decision because, you know, if we don't do anything about it, we'll be a victim of it because we don't understand why we are the way we are. But once we start looking at ourselves as a unique being that needs to be valued, that needs to be accepted, that needs to be loved, and needs to be taken care of, we need to recognize, okay, I am the one that needs to love myself for who I am, that needs to accept myself for who I am, that needs to see myself for who I am. And once I see myself for who I am, now I have to adapt my lifestyle the way that it will support who I am. So at this point, it's great if we find maybe some role models, someone who can teach us how to be even better at who we truly are, right? Because sometimes we may experience, let's say, in a deep meditation or in a certain, let's say you're playing a, a, a wonderful music to yourself and it makes you feel like you want to dance and you you experience a sensation that, oh, this is who I am. This is, this is what feels the most natural to me. But then you, when you stop listening to it, your ego gets back in and you start protecting yourself and you become more negative again towards yourself. So you have to find someone who's maybe already on that higher level who can teach you how to embody more of that purity, more of that authenticity. Because being authentic truly means to, to love yourself for who you are and then being that version of yourself walking like that, talking like that, expressing yourself like that and protecting yourself because you know that this is your uniqueness. Everything in this universe is a transaction. When you give something, you exchange it for something in return. That's how everything works. So when something, someone comes to you and project onto you some negativity, some painful experiences they've been through, you need to know that um, they are exchanging this heaviness for your purity. And it's beautiful if you have a capacity to listen to them, to give some compassion to them and, and care, like um, they need someone to listen. But if you don't have that capacity, then you have to set boundaries, right? You need to protect yourself. So be aware how often those things are happening to you and slowly you will start reading yourself. Like what's the level of my well-being right now? How do I feel right at this moment? Do you feel, you know, from one to 10? Is there five from 10? Maybe three from 10? So we can recognize what are your needs at those moments. And you will notice, well, if lower the well-being, more you need to nurture yourself, more you need to take care of yourself, and more you need to become aware how much your mind affects everything, because the only thing truly that you can control is the way you perceive life, the way you think about life, and how you're dealing with your own unconscious patterns. So we start becoming more aware of what kind of... Um, thoughts awakens up when something triggers you, when you perceive something as negative and you judge those things. So we can learn to become more, let's say, neutral observer. You become more neutral and you stop reacting so much to what is happening. You will notice that the only thing that plugs you to a certain energy is that you start interacting with it through thinking about it and judging it and complaining about it. As soon as you start complaining about something or judging it or even just thinking about it, you will notice that you plug yourself to that energy. 
If you stay neutral, you will notice that nothing truly affects you. You're just being an observer, looking at what's happening. Somebody may come really angry to you and you may just observe them and you may be okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, interesting. If you stay like that, you will notice that person will shift. Because what they've, or what he or she has projected onto you, didn't affect you. So, what they will notice is that you have something they don't have. So, they will kind of feel a sense to respect you. You will earn their respect. And suddenly, they may even want to learn from you. That's where you awaken your true power. When you actually learn to be stable within yourself, to be strongly uh, rooted like a great tree, you will notice that rather than being a sponge that uh, consumes everything that surrounds it, you become this strong pillar that just observe, observes what's happening and can rather look at what's happening from a standpoint of a creator or an artist that could use anything that's happening for a potential inspiration to maybe make something out of it, like a good scientist who may be looking at um, a present culture and would maybe start developing maybe uh, or researching the neuroscience behind certain chaotic uh, relationships like what's happening in the brain, what's happening in the nervous system, what's happening in the heart rate variability. And all those chaotic situations could inspire a neuroscientist, for example, to study the patterns of the brain, to discover what is causing that. And then what about a quantum physics that could discover the same things? Or an artist like a hip hop artist in the past, when they were looking at um, chaotic um, things in society that, that were happening, they were not affected by the negative energy of it. They were inspired by it and they've started making music. And of course, it was presented in many harsh uh, and sometimes looked like harmful ways. But they did a good job because they brought some light, some aw awareness to how they've experienced life. So it brought to society the picture they didn't want to see. You know, sometimes when something is happening and we kind of avoid it because we just don't want to, to look at it, but we know it's there. That's what they did. So it's important to look at everything as a sense of inspiration, how to make the most out of it. But we can't do it if we are constantly drained out. So we have to learn to take care of ourselves, to nurture ourselves, to put ourselves onto the first place and really take care of our own priorities. Okay, this is, this is helping me to be joyful. This is what makes me truly feel alive. This is what makes me feel playful. This is what allows me to be creative. This is what charges my energy. This is what um, makes me feel really good about myself. This is what makes me feel confident. And we start doing more of those things, right? We take care of our lives. We make a project out of our lives and we recognize, well, nothing outside of me is in my control. So I will take care of what is in my control. I will take care of myself. I will nurture myself. I will take care of my money, I will take care of my habits, I will take care of my health, I will take care of my mental health, I will take care of my emotional intelligence, I will acknowledge myself. And then I will go one step further, let's build relationships. I want to 
spend more time with people who may be on that similar level, who have similar interests, who are maybe into similar topics. So we have something in common. And then we go one step further. Let's build something together, a community or a business or whatever we may feel aligned to do. And that's where we notice that actually being pure and being sensitive is a great thing because it helps us to create something new on this world, to start a generation of something completely new, something healthier, something greater that was suppressed in the past. We may notice, okay, because of my sensitivity, I can sense what is wrong so I can do more of what is right. And that is really, really powerful. We truly start filtering things. Okay, this is wrong, so let's do more of what's right. People who suppress their senses, they are constantly in a state of suffering and constantly just running through life, not seeing the beauty of it. You see the beauty. But you really need to protect that part of you because this is pure and gentle and it's not easy sometimes to work with it. So really take time with yourself so you can know yourself, right? So we can know how uniquely you're functioning. What are your unique needs? And provide it to yourself. That will help you to protect yourself from negative energies. And you will start thriving as a fire that transmutes negativity into positivity. So you will go from a sponge that is consuming negative, negative energy into a fire that is producing positive energy. And naturally, you will just become this transmuter of anything that is happening in your own unique way. So my friends, I hope you found anything valuable here today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. I hope you've enjoyed in today's painting of the Phoenix, the fire of trans transformation, right? To anyone who would love to support my art, you can find our Etsy store in the link in the description of this video. Go there and check it out. If any painting resonates with you, it's a sign that it's for you. So thank you so much for your support. With that, you are supporting this mission and I'm truly grateful for you. My friends, till next time, one love. <laughs>